And so there came a day like any other where Fantastic Frankie decided to give us these gems. And on this day, we are uh, going to talk to her and see what she thinks about many things. So, um, that will be that for those that don't know. Oh, snap! There is really a crack in front of my freaking camera. That's unbelievable. Madam, what's good? Tap the little requesty button thing so I can do the thing to get you in here and have conversations about things. And we should do that, which shall be cool. Because uh, I got questions for you, yo. This is, <laughs> this is a scary freaking time. Like, I was, I was trying to escape to, like, Ghana, and then craziness happened in Ghana. And I was trying to escape to Nigeria, and craziness happened in Nigeria. And so now, I don't know where I'm going to go anymore. I really don't. I'm kind of jacked up at the moment. Like, all my escape plans have been botched. What's good? Hey, man. I'm sorry, I look like a pirate. Yo. You good. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Get myself together. What's up, Do you so? Uh, I just, hey, I'm uh, I went live for an hour on the wrong account. It was supposed to be on this one, but we're here now, and this is good. What's good with you? <laughs> I'm good, man. It's crazy. Um, so I saw it on the other account, and I was like, "This is interesting. It's not the one I thought it'd be," you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, luckily, I have to stay on that one. Luckily, I was reminded to hop on this one. Um, Snap, what's, what What do we make of the next two months of life? How do we, uh, how do we knock that out without messing ourselves up? The, the next two months in life or the last two months in life? Good God, the next two months. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do for the next two months? Um, you know what? Every day, I don't know what to do or which route to go. Uh, I just feel like I don't know what's real. You know what I'm saying? So the funny thing is, for the next two months, I plan on we're learning martial arts and how to wield a gun. I just feel like things are going to get crazy. You know what I'm saying? Um, over the next two months. So I guess our main focus is really voting you know what i mean um yeah like my mindset dbz says like it's not like we could go to cons so like my version of like anime a manga and everything lately um it has been like this is my entertainment now and it's benefiting me so like why not do both you know yeah it's I've been taking a lot of the time recently to make all of the things that were in my head. I was traveling so much. I, like, probably been to, like, 12 states this year just bouncing around and doing projects and stuff. And so when I couldn't travel anymore, at first it sucked because I spent, like, $4,000 getting ready to get to cons and signing up for all of them. And then when they were like, do you want your bread back? I was looking to buy a cup of $50. <laughs> it was like, yeah, I know. Take all the coins. But uh, now, like, any idea that I've ever had I'm writing it down do you think you've have you felt more creative over the last couple of months um you know I I don't know if I felt more creative or that I had more time to be creative if that makes any sense because a lot of times I feel like I don't have access to things or new material to work off of and it makes it difficult but then on the other end, I have so much more time to think, to process my thoughts, to learn my craft. And I think that that opportunity has helped me grow uh, on a level that I just haven't been able to when I was working and traveling and stuff like that. I see. Yeah, it's uh, my brother, probably five months ago before I left for North Carolina, I got him to build me a gaming PC. Cause I got tired of not having what I wanted. And so now I want to like, I've realized that it kind of serves me best to serve other people. So like a long time ago, like I've, it might've been back in the boxing days where you told me that like, you want to do like a blur type John Stewart type thing. You still want to do that? Or is there another project that like you have in mind? Oh, the boxing class I did. I mean, <laughs> I still, I, I don't, I haven't really boxed 
um, because I haven't had like an opportunity to go to classes like I used to. Um, but I feel like I've been moving more just away from the fitness that I was doing before. And I've been doing a lot more like personality work, media work, editing work. Um, I do like boxing, but yeah, I just haven't had time to practice it and perfect it. And now I've been like trying to learn better, like Krav Maga instead. <laughs> Good God! Yes. Right? You can't really teach that at a con. Um, <laughs> so he said, "We seen that Vegeta pig. That's why I was able to do that Vegeta pig with me <laughs> boxing because I I have experience in boxing. I just haven't been able to do it in a while, and it's like it's weird because I've always had this trait." personal training and stuff like that where I was always no matter what good with the job like I always knew I could train on the side and make some cheese and it was just a craft that was lucrative and now with everything closed and like contact with strangers being at a minimum it's like that became obsolete and then I was like yo it's time for me to learn things that I can do from home that I can do virtually and like to grow with the the new normal of the world and it's like this one-on-one -on -one boxing these in-person things they they just don't make sense anymore you know right even like going back to new york new york's been different like i've gotten to go there a couple times to like train with avatar and stuff and um there's nobody it's for some it's, it's usually like gta where the the sidewalks are cramped all over and there's nobody yeah. outside and no one I, yeah it's it's weird it It is weird, but there's a comfort, I feel, with how empty it is and how respectful everyone is of Como. Uh, you know, like, I, vi I went down south a couple times to, like, visit my sister in Texas and just how starkly different the culture is um, and how comfortable they are being outside made me nervous, like, I'm not trying to ruin my summer and getting COVID because y'all niggas want to be at the club in the middle of summer. Or or I just don't want to, like, I know there's a there's a chance that, like, you'll never taste again. And, like, I love eating. So just stuff like that has been, like, you know, wearing on me. And I'm, like, more wary of what I'm seeing. Um, but, yeah, I've definitely learned how to, like, I ride my bike more and I'm more open. And I have an, a bigger opportunity to learn more, which is great. Yeah, it's huge. There's opportunities that present themselves when interesting things happen. Crowd my God is freaking. What made you pick freaking Crowd my God? Yo, I told you, like, it's, it's, it's the most practical if there is a zombie apocalypse. Yo, Crowd my God is where you want to go. It's elbows, it's gouging of the eyes. It's like, it's very um, offensively based. Um, versus like jujitsu and taekwondo is more about like, you know, discipline and structure and shit. I just want to learn how to like fuck people up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, I need to do Krav Maga, learn how to like be someone up instead of like all that discipline. I'm disciplined already. I don't need all that. You know. What I mean? <laughs> uh, and Cobra Kai. If you guys are watching Cobra Kai, it's also like inspiring me to be like more active in martial arts because like that show is dope if you guys haven't seen it it's hilarious i haven't seen it how how does it how does it rank in terms of like all the reboots that we've gotten recently it seems to be the best of all of the reboots right now agreed yeah absolutely because what it is is i feel like there were like five frankies in the writer's room and they watched karate kid and was like daniel larusso is a jerk and then that's what Cobra Kai is, even, like, just shown from the perspective of the bully and, like, how, like, he never started fights. He just kind of finished them very aggressively and stuff like that. And Daniel Russo always, like, went out of his way to, like, ruin his life. And it's just an interesting, fresh take that I really love. So, yeah, I'm definitely a fan of it. I recommend it to everyone I know, especially if you've seen Karate Kid. It's so funny to just see. It. And if you, especially if people like my stuff, it's definitely that hot take, dark, different perspective on something that you love from your childhood, you know? That's what's up. Nostalgia is an interesting beast right now. 
especially as not only are things getting rebooted a lot, but you're seeing like spiritual successors, like Stranger Things and stuff. Do you think we're still going to be in that that realm of um, uh, helping with nostalgia? Are we going to like exhaust all the nostalgia from like the 80s to the uh, mid 90s? Uh, no, I don't think they'll ever get exhausted because like even now we're watching Stranger Things, not Stranger Things, you just said that. Um, Lovecraft Country, and that's set in the 50s, and we're, we're like, getting off of that 50s aesthetic and stuff like that. Like, it's something that we enjoy. And then on top of that, I see a lot of posts, like, I, I hope season two is set in the 80s, and we can see their, their children and stuff like that. So I, I definitely think that we're going to see more. Unfortunately, I think reboots are always going to be a thing. You know what I mean? Like, there'll be a reboot soon of probably Firefly. God knows when that'll start. And just, like, a bunch of re reboots that we're going to start to see. And I just think that people are here for whatever. If our favorite people are in it. And if it's, uh, if it has a good premise, you know? Yeah, I hope they don't reboot Heroes. As long as they don't reboot Heroes, we good. Heroes, the, like, X-Men thing? Yeah. Didn't they? They rebooted that already. They they did they had they a, already did it was but it was but it yes. was like a year or so or so ago and I was like this is terrible <laughs> like, this, this, this the CW formula the CW formula works for one season minimum well generally works for one season and sometimes you can stretch it to like two and a half maybe right. like three with half of the episodes being good but the CW formula eventually washes out and that's kind of the the first time we saw that was in Heroes in Heroes. Mm -hmm. No, I thought Heroes was um, ABC or something. But either way, I, I, I agree with you with CW, especially since I think their seasons are too long. So each season <laughs> is two seasons in it. So we're watching like, you know, you're watching Arrow season three, but really you watch the season six and you just get fatigued. Like it's nice to have episodes, but not when they're an hour. And it's like, I don't know, it's like slow, it ends up being slower too, and then you get lost in it. And I know, even with The Flash, that's like the biggest issue is they have to have like two big bads each season, and it's like, it ends up being speedsters every season. And it just feels like redundant after a while, you know? Yeah, I think it needs to end, because there's not much you can do with it. Like the problem with, it seems like the problem with making... Uh, material about characters that are like side characters or like mini characters is if you don't go deep into the lore you're going to end up at the glass ceiling because a lot of yeah. people start with like their best character will generally be in the first season like in black lightning tobias the whale was like the first bad guy and after you beat tobias well as black lightning you ain't really got nobody to go with after that yeah well black lightning was smart never to let tobias go and i think that's the issue that arrow and flash had and Supergirl, the big bad is gone after one season. Um, and Supergirl got better when they introduced big bads like Lex Luthor and stuff like that that were, you know, reoccurring throughout the seasons. Um, yeah, it, it does. It gets bad. It gets bad after a while. You're like, I'm tired of seeing this. Um, Black Lightning, I used to love because Tobias used to black all the time. On black people, like he wasn't black. I mean, I know he's albino, but he'd be like, "Black lightning, you black motherfucker, you <laughs> monkey nose." And I'm like, "Why do you hate black people so much?" It made me think, like, is this a note or is this like the actors just like, "Yo, I'm gonna just be a self hating black man and just go in." Um, but yeah, I mean, there's some spinoffs I really like. Like, I like, I love Legend of Korra. I know a lot of people who hate it. I love it. Hmm. Have you, you seen you it? Watch it? Uh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's sure. good. I've seen both. Um, and I've seen both recently, right? Like, I, I watched both in the last, like, three months. And I rewatched it. And I really appreciate it. Like, um, Cora going through PTSD. I appreciate it. How very different the characters were. Um, I appreciate it. Which they did in Avatar as well. But them showing, like, muscular women. You know what I mean? Uh, all these dark women, attractive older women fighting and never really being in trouble. Like, me being relieved that the old chick comes in to save the day is like, 
very few and far between. So it's just stuff like that that I was like, yo, this show, this show slaps. I loved Aang and his story. But each story was like four different books, which was the great part in the in the, you know, something that could have been to me put it lower, a little bit lower than Cora that was uh like was it three or four seasons? Three. Uh, it was like a three season arc. You know what I like? Cora felt like it was, if that it felt like one season with thirty episodes versus like each season of Avatar is like defined, and I I like that. Someone said, which season is my favorite of what? Cora or um, yeah, Cora. Of Cora, my favorite season would be. Hmm. Let me think. Anon, the first season. Yo, that thing was scary. No, no, I'm lying. Uh, the season after she lets out the spirit world Is and it? everybody becomes um, airbenders. Yeah. Yes. Yo, I forgot. Because I liked Anon. I think Anon is one of the scariest villains I've ever seen. And, like, they, they touch on it in Supergirl, but fighting xenophobia with a villain is scary, right? That's like us fighting like Trump and stuff like that. Like fighting xenophobia means that how do you fight people you're supposed to protect? You know what I mean? And I think that's a very interesting thing. But, uh, oh boy, that that airbender who could fly? Zaheer was out here giving people bars and hands at the same time. Bars and hands at the same time. So much so that he bled into... Um, Season four, right? She he, like the next season. We were all tripping about him. Like, dang, da 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 da. Um, he reminds me of Zabuzo. Oh, right. Like back in, deep into Shibu, then they're like, yo, he ain't as he ain't as scary as Zabuzo. Like, pain is up in there. Pain is there, and they're talking about Zabuzo, and it's just like ah, that's a good villain, Frieza. That all these villains that are like Frieza's not that nuanced, but strike fear to like even when they know they could beat this guy they can't because they're so shook i love it yeah anytime the villain actually makes sense it has a mind of things that's what like i read uh there's these big chunks of like batman volumes that i've like i've gotten into getting big chunks of comics instead of individual little comics now and i got nightfall part one and seeing, like, OG Bane in the comics when he first showed up, and he's in Santa Prisca, and he's a little kid holding his head through the, uh, through the bar. The man. <laughs> yes! Like, seeing him legit grow into the person he becomes, and how he spends all morning meditating. Like, he meditates instead of sleeping in the morning time. All he does is train. Seeing that character literally develop, we don't get to see that a lot anymore. So whenever they treat us with that, and the anime does it way more than cartoons, I really appreciate it. Yeah, I, I, I'm I starting to like that, that I'm starting to see villains and understand. Because I, I hate when I'm like, I don't get, you going to destroy the world? What? Where, where you going to live? Like, a lot of times I'm like, so what's the issue? At least with Frieza, Frieza's like power hungry. And that makes sense. Like, he has places to live. He has his crew. He's like, yo, this is how I'm trying to live. Um, so yeah, um, Mindset keeps on talking about DBZ. He's going through the the villains, but like Majin Vu is another one. He's just this like marshmallow that like like that's an anarchist, but it doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that's what's interesting now about that new Three Jokers comic that dropped like a month or so ago, where you get to finally get some backstory on the Jokers because they've confirmed that like the Joker changes who he is like over time, and. Yeah, I think it's it's something after we saw Killmonger, that's all we want now. We like why why is your villain this way? We need to find out. And that's what people are asking for and they're giving it to us, you know? Yeah. It's dope. Do you think we'll eventually get the word is not adult animation, but I'm gonna say adult animation. There we go, mature. Do you think we'll ever get like mature, well written um animation that's coming out of America or at least produced in America that's high quality? Yo, um, the Harley Quinn show is one of them. Oh. And it's hilarious. But it's a comedy show. But it's definitely, it's a high quality. It's honestly, to me, one of the best representations of the Batman verse I've seen. But it's, it's, it's dripped in comedy, right? But it's about Harley. It's like the Birds of Prey movie, but on a bigger scale. Because it's only on um, Harley Quinn and like, her relationship with 
Poison Ivy as her best friend and her trying to like make a name for herself outside of the Joker. And even though she did all the work, you know how sexism and stuff plays into that. This is really good. It's two seasons in. I think HBO Max picked it up so more people are going to watch it. But it's incredible. I've really enjoyed it. I'm going to check it out. I've been missing because I've seen some clips of it. And the Damien, the piece with Damien had me rolling. So fun. And there's other like one offs that they say that you're like a villain like Harley Quinn would be this funny and would make quick. You know what I mean? Like um, Jim Gordon is an alcoholic, which he's been in the comics in certain iterations. But like the way they play into that makes sense because you know he's never getting shine he's still in the same position um you know batgirl being obsessed with twitter and instagram because she's 22 and in college so just things like that it, it, it's really really funny and i or the league of <laughs> the we the league of villains is still like twitter still has a twitter and stuff right so like one of the villains says something to wonder woman which is like not pc and the, Le the league of v villains disown him like oh wow. this does not reflect our our da -da 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 -da. and it's just stuff like that that i i think is really smart it's made only for adults and it's drawn comic book style so it's drawn pretty i know one of the issues with like rick and morty and other like american animation is that like we do that weird not anatomically correct style and people were like i hate it um but harley quinn is you know anatomically correct and it makes more sense you know that's what's up i'm gonna definitely check it out what would you yeah. want what cartoon or what entity would you like to be animated and brought into existence hmm what is something i've watched that i really love i would love to see an x-men series again um because i or no 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 i would love to see a fantastic four series um just because a lot of people forget that like fantastic four is meant to be set in space and it's colorful and dynamic and even if they made it into like a 3d type animation i really think that would be really really dope to watch that um harry potter i would love to see animated um and a Harry Potter anime would actually be really funny. It'd be like Black Clover times a thousand. Um, oh, and there's this African story that I read that's really good called um, Children of Blood and Bone. That joint would be really cool animated and into a series over time. They're already, I, she already got a movie deal, but it'd be cool if it was, if it was uh, animation. Tommy Adeyemi is sensei. Everything that she does is amazing. <laughs> So someone said um, they're trying to bring Fantastic Four in through MC into the MCU. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, this so the, the MCU is doing a Spider Verse movie, and finally that makes sense to me because that will be a great way on how they can introduce the X Men, the Internals, and everyone else who like wasn't around during any of these Avenger movies mm -hmm. that would have definitely pulled up to fight, especially Thanos. Now it's like. Oh, we tapped into this multiverse. This person came from over there. This person came from over there. I'd be like, "Where? This makes sense." Because yeah. I was really trying to figure out how they was gonna do it. Well, yeah, because it had me shook when I was while well, re-watching uh, the second Spider-Man movie, Far From Home, and Mysterio was like, "Yes, I come from the other dimension." I was like, "Finally, we have a multiverse!" And the whole movie switches, and really, he's an old Stark employee. It's like, oh, well guess there is no multiverse so it's tight and they even brought in the spider sense like they fixed all of the things that people were complaining about for the past four or five movies that tom holland was in yeah i i really enjoyed that i i, I thought i thought that spider-man was better far from home was better than the avengers as standalone films and i mean did i enjoy avengers more yeah i did but that was through nostalgia and like relief and stuff like that. But if I showed Spider-Man Far From Home and showed someone um, Avengers Endgame who didn't see anything else, they would definitely call Spar Far From Home a better movie. Endgame starts you in the middle of the movie. Like the movie starts in the middle of the movie. You like the fuck? So it's just like, in terms of a full story, it was the first time I watched the after credit scene that propelled the story without 
hindering the story. It was the first time I see Marvel set up other stories without it being like, I can tell they're just putting things into place. And I just thought it was a good thing. And I love that they teased the multiverse and then took it away. And then it's like, but it's actually real. I think that's dope, man. I really do. I love it. Who's your favorite Spider-Man? Yeah, I got to give it to Toby. I got to give it to Toby. I love Tom Holland's movies. But y'all forget. Yo, y'all so quick to, to give up Toby. Like, we all wasn't like. I remember, like, Spider-Man 1 was, like, the biggest movie out there. We was all like, oh, my God. Da, 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 da. We was loving it. And it wasn't until the third movie that we were having second guesses about Toby. I didn't even realize how old he looked until I watched the third movie. I was like, damn, he's been this old the whole time. Um, but I just thought it was a great movie. I thought it was a great, for its time too, I thought it did really well. Now we have all this extra stuff that we can use, but I thought it was good. I thought it was, he was good. Spider-Man 2 is still my favorite superhero movie ever. Like, all the things that happened in it, just it's it's perfect. Like nothing bad happened in the movie. <laughs> Everything that you could possibly want in a movie happened. Yo, mindset DBZ said his mask kept on coming out every freaking movie. Do not front like Tom's mask don't be coming off all the time. Everybody actually the whole public knows that Tom is Spider Man now, right? So, like, what you saying? What you mad about his mask, yo? Bro, the Spider-Man suit, and, and for Tobey Maguire, the Spider-Man suit is like Goku's shirt. It just magically be getting ripped up. Come off. Ripped off, so, yeah. Because you need that emotion. The thing that Tobey Maguire had that nobody else had was genuine emotion. When, you, when, he, when he's happy, you see him happy. When he's miserable and crying and in the rain, you get to see that. Like, you connect to him on a deeper level. It's excellent. And he was the only Spider-Man who was poor. People forget that that's such a big part of his character is that he's poor. He's dirt poor until he starts working for Tony, which I know Tom Harlan starts. But this is well into his adulthood that he starts making cheese. So, like, I just need to see some struggle here because, like, what, Sp th this Spider-Man going to Europe? Ain't no way. Not my Peter Parker. The Peter Parker <laughs> I was raised with would never have made it to Europe in his teenage years. It may have been like, who? I'm sorry. Do we got your <laughs> money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You better talk to Osborne to pay for that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just, uh, that's one thing that people forgot on how much, why Spider-Man was relatable was because he was broke. He was making his shit himself. He he was a regular New Yorker figuring out how to go on, you know, which I thought was dope. Yeah, I've seen this conversation be had with some people right now who are entering the second era, the second wave of, like, acceptable black nerds and i didn't think about it until now but when you look into like because uh neil adams is like a classic artist and writer in dc he broke down how like he invented uh john stewart because when you looked at black characters in comics they were either like a hood dude or they were african and those were the only two options so he made john stewart as like effectively like a middle class proper speaking black dude and my dad says that john stewart is corny but we've now gotten to this point where like when you look into a lot of black characters in comics that are not independent you don't get a lot of blackness out of them in terms of like african-american culture and stuff and you often don't have black people writing these stories either you usually have like brian michael bendis or somebody who's like very uh left-leaning so as we're in this next era do you think that it would fail miserably if a major publisher was to attempt to make a a, a more realistic written black character or do you think like it would fall on its head yo i think that they've already done it and dc is bringing it back so milestone comics was nothing but a bunch of black people in different capacities written by black men but still by black people um and i say men because you see that of course throughout the stories that there were no black women present and you, but you can also see the difference between how like Rocket's written versus like Nubia or Photon or anyone else, like just the differences there. And they had real issues that we faced, but also like Icon was affluent and a Republican. You know what I mean? Static Shock was 
Spider-Man to me. He was black Spider-Man. His story and everything so mirrored Spider-Man. And I was like, yeah, this is like Spider-Man. Um, hard, hardware? Yeah. I think his name was Hardware. He was basically like, you know, it was just a bunch of stories that were all very different. And they all featured black people. And they did so well that DC Comics were like, let's pick this up. This is lucrative. And I think at the end of the day, yeah, we're the minority, but we willing to show up and show out for our stuff, especially when it comes from a big publication. And I think people are seeing the dollars in that from Black Panther. So I think it's coming, yo, really quickly. Indeed. Have you seen that thing that Black Sands just dropped? Which one? The, uh, the video that Black Sands dropped. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I'm talking about. And it's all these, and all these companies are starting to hire us because they had to put their money where their mouth is. And now we're, we're here to shine and really show ourselves. And I love it. I really do. It's huge. I hope we get more of it. I, do you think, um, do you think that it would be better for larger companies to give independent black companies funding much in the same way that DC had their deal with Milestone? Or do you think there's a way for uh, Black people of influence to use their influence to get uh, independent projects funded? I think it needs to be a little of both. And I think that's something we forget. It's, it's a sad reality, but even Tyler Perry doesn't have the reach of like ABC. You know what I mean? And it's like, why I would pre- I I would prefer to have both. I want these white companies to employ and not touch black creatives and their work. But then I also want those black creatives to basically do what Tyler Perry did and then fund their own shit that they can on their own platforms and we create our own platforms. Um, but at the end of the day, to think that we'll be able to have the same reach because even if we have the money. Even if I had the money to start an anime and broadcast it across America, if the president of Viacom don't fuck with me, now Time Warner don't show it. You know, so now anybody with Time Warner can't see it. That's a whole region. You know, just small things like that that people don't consider that it's like, we can make our own stuff and it could be quality. And then what ends up happening is these white companies purchase it. But I think that the biggest thing here is making sure that we don't lose the integrity. We push for us to become part of these big companies and also start our own companies. Yeah, that's why seeing the work that Issa Rae is doing, Lena Waithe, that era of black creators, Donald Glover, that right. seeing how adamant they are and making the things they want to make in uh holding by it and keeping the integrity, that's like beautiful to witness. Exactly. But even Issa Rae and Donald Glover got some parameters in their first season. We we show, we show saw them show their ass, particularly Don or Donald Glover. Like Atlanta season one was wild, but once Atlanta season one did well and they were like, yo, do what you want, he was like, bet. And then Atlanta season two was just weird and super black and I loved it. And even with Insecure and stuff like that, we saw those changes as as they got more agency as we viewed in and I think that's great. And what's up, like um black gray comic geek? He's in here. He's always dropping thirst traps. He's one of my favorite man. Love him. Michael's a freaking G, yo. Wow. Welcome to yo, freaking yo, the news, bro. Like, good on you, fam. Bless you. <laughs> like, I've, Michael has been in my ear for years. And I've never He's thought great. to actually go on Instagram and find him. And find him because you've been on him on, on YouTube? Yes. YouTube, man, been hooking you up. Yeah, <laughs> we just found each other over the summer. And we're so late. That's what's up. <laughs> Dang. Um, wow. Uh, what's, what's, what's keeping you happy right now, yo? Yo, um, riding my bike actually is very, I don't know, cathartic for me. Um, I got a little speaker. I play whatever the fuck I want on there, and it feels good. Um, I think working on my page has been almost full-time at this point, has been really, really fun, and it's an opportunity that I got because of COVID, and I'm actually really happy 
um, to have been able to grow this way and to like in that same tone of Issa Rae and stuff like that, I was wild before, but now I could, I talk about whatever I feel like it without ever second guessing it. Um, because I've established this following during this quarantine time and I love it. I really do. No, it's huge. Seeing the stuff you're able to do now makes me happy. It's like, yes, free, free, free. This is excellent. You know, I'm trying, yo. I'm really trying. Cause you know, initially when the summer hit, and everyone stopped making bread and started like protesting and things like that. I almost felt like my page was inappropriate. You know what I mean? Like, why am I arguing about who's stronger right now and things like that when I could be talking about things that I feel like matters? Um, and yeah, so I started connecting it to politicians, to policies and things like that because that's the only form of entertainment I really have right now. And yeah, people were responding to it. And it's something I would have never had the courage to do last year. Um, and thanks for the plug, Mike. I appreciate it. <laughs> do you have any advice for new content creators? Um, advice. My biggest advice to everyone is always like understanding what your mission is. Like, what's your mission statement? What do you want to see? Know yourself and then don't let people kind of convince you otherwise because I realize a lot that like me trying to appease my peers um me speaking to just people who would have criticisms with no solutions and things like that I learned so much and then I learned like that I'm always right you know what I mean you're always right no one can tell you what you want for your page and what's good for your page even if they're more successful than you because they're successful doing something typically different from what you're doing and people want to see something different so um yeah unless they come with solutions like i get hey your sound is off you should try this yeah that's a solution but don't be like people will roll up like you should stop talking about this fuck those people that's because <laughs> the best thing about an, an algorithm is that an algorithm builds itself for the, the audience that you create so everybody kind of has a different version of the algorithm you know it's all encompassed in one bigger algorithm. So exactly. like, depending on the stuff that you make stuff about, the people that are into that thing will find you. So as long as you either A, stick to yourself, or B, stick to a, a, a method of content that is um, in the same vein or in a consistent vein, then that kind of guarantees success in a way. Exactly. Agreed. 100%. It's fun. At least there's... That's the only good thing about AI. Everything else out is a little bit questionable, but... <laughs> I like. <laughs> and you know what? I did I did find out that the good thing about the algorithm is like people like me would have gotten lost if there isn't an algorithm. Cuz you follow people like the shade room and stuff who post every second and you don't truly care about everything they're posting about or whatever would drown out people like me who don't have a staff and stuff to post as frequently. Um yeah, celebrities and stuff like that. They have a full social media team, so that makes sense. But yeah, um, it helps. It helps us out. Sometimes it hurts us, but for the most part, it really does help us out. Thanks. I unfortunately don't follow any celebrities that I don't know, <laughs> but I understand how that would be a problem. Yeah, be you don't follow any meme pages that post memes like every five minutes. Oh, you got a good stream, man. <laughs> You got a good clean stuff. Sometimes I'm like, what is this on my stuff? Ugh. But it'd be like, I like all their other stuff. So why not? You know, I know people going to repost the meme and a story anyway. So I'm going to just get it from there. Yo, that's a fact. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. Because very rarely do I see the same meme twice. Whereas when I used to follow meme pages, I'd see the same meme like five times in a row and it would hurt my soul a little bit until I found the sources of those original pages. To be honest, that's why I it took me so long to get on Twitter because I was like, the funniest things on Twitter are also on Instagram. People are screenshotting it and post it out. Um, but then I found the joy of people live tweeting, and then I was like, bet, I need to be here. <laughs> Tell me about the barren wasteland of Twitter. I've jumped into it, and I – this – Twitter is <laughs> – um, how, how do you suggest people operate in the, in the, in the land of Twitter? Yo, I can't, I'm actually not the person to talk to. I only got like 300 followers on Twitter. Um, I, I, do, I go there to creep. But from what I hear, the way that you 
get all big on Twitter is by um, live tweeting and just doing funny stuff. So I heard it's actually easier to grow on Twitter if you're constantly tweeting, um, which, you know, I never had the opportunity to do. And I hate it because I'm like, I say some funny stuff. Um, but normally now you got to uh, attach it with a GIF and that's where I fall short. I'm like, I don't know what GIF to put here. But that's what puts your tweet to the next level. Is there's a GIF that has nothing to do with what you're talking about, and then you add that in there, you know? As many things as you don't see, you can make some GIFs. I know. I know. It's time. It's time, honestly. Yeah. It's time. I need a team soon. Hey. Come. Soon come. Soon. Oh, I, you know the people. I know. I know. I got to pay them, though. You know what I'm saying? That's true. I'm a... Juasso Graphics needs to get in a position to start sponsoring things so you can hire this team. <laughs> <laughs> hire the full team. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to get hired so I can hire other people. You know that's what I'm saying? Oh, yes. That's how it should be. And that's what, like, um, there's there's a there's a, a, a gate that I'm trying to break down right now. I've been hammering it for three years, and it's finally starting to come down a little bit. Because these there's a lot of entities that exist that are like supposedly in our world or in our realm, those entities are blocked off by like white companies, which is really weird. And so I'll try to get them. And if I'm anonymous, then I'll kind of slip by. But if I'm like, yo, I'm 18 and I'm black and I'm doing stuff, then it's like, I would direct you to these other 10 people in our network that you could not get to people at the top, which is weird. I don't know why they do that. It, yeah, it's some runaround. Um, yeah, I've been doing this now a year and a half going on two years and I'm just I just saying black now is starting to have equity um and I think the biggest thing is once people see that your your product is good and marketable then it starts to speak for itself and I think that was the issue I was having a last couple of years right it's like I'd reach out to someone and they're like you're not a cosplayer like what what are women doing? What are you as a woman and a nerd? Like, what else would you be doing? Hmm. And it was really hard for them to like see me outside that box. But now we're talking about diversity and inclusion. I'm like, hey, I'm one of five women talking about this stuff who are black. And they're like, dang. That now that starts to see that 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 brings a certain allure. And then they look and they're like, oh, and this quality of this product is good. Um, and that's what our content is. It's product for them. So the, in your same way, like, yo, this guy is collaborating with black artists and creating, you know, streetwear and he's 18. That's the story that someone's definitely going to get behind him. I will try. What did you do to break down the barrier? Snap. My apply, uh, apply directly to people who are like, we support black. Black Lives Matter. I slid up in the DMs quick. I'm like, word? How how much you think they matter? Come <laughs> up. Give me some cheese. What's up? So Let's see where your mouth is, fam. Let's see what happens. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You got to You got to You got to be bold, man. You got to put out as many feelers as you want. And then as you can, I shouldn't even say as you want. And eventually one of them are going to, you know, come up. Yeah. And having that having the, the presence that you've had and consistency you've had, I'm sure, plays into that as well. Because freaking this dude right here, there's a podcast that I used to, like the first podcast I ever listened to religiously, he was on it. And that's why I know of his existence. And so I've literally been listening to this man for like hours of my life. Like, and because of that, if I hear his name or the brand of his name, I'll immediately think of everything like, yo, this person is dope. Let's see what else this person's doing. Exactly. I'm like, oh, what? A, and that, and, and then it's like, which is the best thing ever when you fall into a full hole of that person's work, right? You going in deep and you looking at stuff from weeks ago, seeing the changes over time. It, it's dope. Also, how are you typing? I don't even see your R's moving. Have you ever seen me punch, Frankie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking and I'm like, Yo, my man is moving. The phone ain't tapping. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Putting this kung fu to good use. <laughs> I see. I see. Uh, Mindset DBZ says, how do I conquer the rejection when brands don't want to work with you? Yo, I just I just move on, yo. I'm like, somebody going to work with me eventually. Um, 
yeah, at least that's what I used to do. When I first came into the space, um, I would have a lot of issues with people saying that what I was doing was gimmicky. Um, like it was gimmicky and stuff like that. And then just after a while, they started to see that it wasn't there and I got a lot more yeses. So it's like everyone says no and then one person says yes and then all of a sudden everyone's saying yes because they're like, oh, such and such is working with them. Yo, me too. Da, da, da. And then it, it, it just creates a buzz, you know? Yeah, it was a beautiful thing because like um, when QuirkCon happened, I got invited to QuirkCon and then at QuirkCon I'm at Land Party and getting animated and the whole Quirktastic Mafia. And then from there, I went to BlurredCon and met everybody else at BlurredCon. Then after that, uh, Jackie had the Adorn by Chi event, and I knew Greg already. And so, like, he magically dapped me up. And so Jackie was like, you know Greg? And I was like, yeah. So now I know Jackie, and from there, now I know all these people. Like, it, it just exactly. happens. And that's what I love about the Black nerd space is it's such a small yet big community and I think that's so dope. Like, all of the creators, a new creator comes out, I hear about them. And, you know, I'm likely to share it. And I don't think that that camaraderie is there with the white nerd creators. Like, I don't see, like, um, Hot Topic reposting some random white creator. You know what I mean? They got 300 followers. Like, but party nerds would, you know, uh I'm trying to think of someone else. New R. Caesar would. They don't care what your following count is. You black, what you did was dope. I'm going to share it. And I really like that about us. Yeah, it's you seeing the work that Afropunk is doing. And exactly. now... Wait, was it, was it Afropunk? Or was it Black guy? It was like Punk Black. There we are. Seeing the punk work Black. Doing, and then seeing Afropunk do what it's doing now. I just remind, remind, was reminded that I need to get on Afropunk because they trying to give people bread at the moment. Yo, I peed. I was like, oh, let me go ahead and call Afropunk. Yeah. Yo, facts. But I love that too, that like it all once they work with one good black creative, it opens up for other black creatives to be like, let me be a part of this, you know? Yeah, we're in a really good position. Do you think because I've asked this question before of other people, do you think right now in terms of the black nerd space, the alternative black space, do you think we're in a bubble or a renaissance? Yo, a renaissance. All of the top billing movies, shows right now, all have a sci-fi nerd component to it. Fantasy, whatever you want to call it. All of, If you look at the Emmys, who won the most? Even if you look at, well, Watchmen won the most, and that's a superhero show. That's a comic book show. But even if you look beyond that, Euphoria, right? Had all these scenes that were, like, magical and spacey. Um Top movies that you get the the biggest promotions, Tenet, stuff like that. These are all comic book sci-fi fantasy movies. And I think we're starting to go in a renaissance where people who are not what they would call the stereotypical nerd are now being a part of this community and, like, sharing it. And I think it's dope. It is. Do you think that same uh, – it's, it's not gatekeeping. Do you think there was there's a, a degree of knowledge, a degree of thought that one often is expected to have when they're considered a nerd? And it seems as if recently with conversations of uh, gaslighting have come up, the conversation of gatekeeping, that that's going good. But at the same time, there's like these preliminary questions that are asked when people are all into things. As nerd culture is becoming more mainstream, do you think that string of questions is going to evaporate? No, I think they've been becoming more intense. You know, like, so now the biggest thing is, yeah, everyone's watching this now, but have you gone beyond that? Have you read the source material? Are you on the website that they made? And da 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 um, <laughs> Mike said his roti just came here. He live in Jersey. It's not, that roti can't be that great. Oh, <laughs> God could get the Brooklyn roti, but I digress. Um, what were you talking about? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, gatekeeping. Pardon. Yeah. yeah, it's it's definitely getting on a bigger scale now because now it's like, okay, well, you've seen this. Everyone saw Endgame. Did you see why Thanos was originally trying to get all of the Infinity Gems and da 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 So it's like every, every time now, there's always a way for the gatekeep. So even though as it becomes more mainstream, there's always going to be some indie version of it that people expect you to know on top of it especially if you're discussing it. Dang. 
that sucks. <laughs> it sucks even more because, like, in a weird way, I have the like, I legit tell people I don't watch anime. And they'd be like, You also, you don't watch it? I was like, No, free. How do you think I run a website and watch 50,000 seasons at the same time? It's not possible. But I, it sucks because I'll hear people having this conversation and grilling people hard. And I want to stop them. But at the same time, I ain't got enough ammunition to fight. How do you suggest we support people that are being gatekeeped or being negatively affected by uh, gatekeeping and gaslighting? Yo, um, whenever a third party stops the person and says you're gatekeeping, it always stops them in their tracks. Right, because like if you were gatekeeping me, and I was like, "Yo, why are you talking to me like that? You're gatekeeping." You'd be like, "Why are you being so sensitive? I'm just having a debate, a discussion." But if there was a third party there, or someone else is like, "Why are you gatekeeping right now? We just trying to have a good time." Now you you're looking. Now you're embarrassed, right? Because now, and then I say, "Yeah, now you're in the minority, and now you're embarrassed because someone who's not affected by it." is 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 speaking out to you and i think that's something that a lot of men don't understand like yo i need you to stick up for me because me calling them out isn't going to really work but when you call yourself out and you call out other people that you see without me even speaking on it now they're looking retrospectively and they're like damn especially when it's from someone they respect there's one thing when, when like sometimes they'll call you a simp and stuff like that but other times they'll be like damn maybe I, I need to watch my words that's the that's the least you're gonna get that they're gonna be like fine i need to watch how i talk around you fine cool thank you wow i legit didn't it. it's strange i not had it broken down to me in such simplicity where like i can actually understand that like that actually yeah. makes like by effectively by calling people out publicly you're making it in the public gazette guys to punish bad activity and thus, it's publicly accessible to punish bad activity, which means bad activity goes down. So exactly. all I have to do to support, and this is this is a large conversation, which I try not to dip in too much, but pardon me for the next 15 seconds. All I have to do to support black women is just talk, tell idiots that they're idiots. That's it. That That's like, it. <laughs> That's it. Because even, like, I posted something about Meg Thee Stallion back when she did that live, and she named... Um, I'm not even going to say his name, for shooting her. And there were men like, how y'all saying we don't support black women, da, 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 or joking that she was a man because she's tall and that's why he shot her, or talking about some relationship that they probably had. Um, and I'm like, y'all out here attacking this black woman and simultaneously saying that you don't that black women, you don't understand why we're saying we're unprotected. And, and it was just a very interesting scene to be a part of. And I was like, yo, I can't, you know, if there was just a couple guys in here calling the other men stupid, it wouldn't just be me ranting, you know? Right. Yeah. So the way that we stop that rant, the, the way that we stop the rants that hurt the feelings of dudes that then later become gatekeepers is by nipping gate. Gatekeepers are the root of all of all evil. Yeah, I remember I was in eighth grade, and um, there was this kid. He was nerdy. No one talked to him. No one. I was nerdy, too, but people talked to me because I was just, like, school nerdy. People don't know I, like, read comic books and stuff. So he's sitting there with his anime buddies, and I overhear them talking about um, Dragon Ball Z, and this is peak Dragon Ball Z. This is Namek Saga, y'all. And I rolled up, and he was like, shut up. Like, what do you what do you know about it, right? which immediately embarrassed me, but then his boys then fueled him to continue that behavior. Versus if they're like, if they looked at him and was like, yo, we finally gonna have a girl sit with us. Why are you tripping? It would have been a totally different experience for me, but because they're like, yeah, she's a girl, she don't know. Then it was all of them, co or somewhere being silent, it was all of them co-signing on it. And now giving him that fire to be like, yeah, I could talk like this if I want to, you know? Mm -hmm. Huh. Um, did I school him? No, I did. What you mean? I got embarrassed. You know what I mean? And I didn't, I didn't have the platform to school him. And that's something people don't remember or seem to grasp. Like me schooling someone and with their peers who agree with them is me ranting and just talking at people. 
right? If there aren't any, if there isn't anyone receptive to what I'm saying, then I, my my words are falling on deaf ears, and it, it's just a waste of your time. You need people to kind of understand or agree with what you're saying, or being open to agree for what you say to really push through. Hmm. I put this name when they was on friends. Yeah, the audacity. If y'all saw the guy too. So it's like the fact that this guy had the audacity. Yeah, that's the funniest thing too. And I used to say that's why guys gatekeep so much. So they gatekeep women for so long. And that's why I personally think there's a disparity um on between bad, bad women and like bad, bad men in this space, right? Because while men were able to live their true self and they didn't have to clean themselves and do wear deodorant and be amongst themselves. We were forced out of the community and had to simulate with everyone else and learn hygiene and stuff like that. And I think that's <laughs> why there's that's my that's my that's my theory of why we're so bad. Like people are like, oh all these bad nerds are coming out of nowhere. I'm like, we've been in hiding, we've been in the closet, learning the ways of everyone and now we're back. And you hating because you didn't have to, you know? It's like the X-Men when all the mutants just popped up out of nowhere. And the X-Men were like, where the heck was y'all? Where were you? Assimilating. Don't be a hater because you was wearing <laughs> spandex, colorful spandex. Um, do, you, do I think the pandemic has made the community more aware of these issues? Yo, facts. I do. Because I feel like since the pandemic started, social media has become our only source of entertainment. Like, as the show started to trail off, and even now, it's part of our entertainment. We're watching anything. We're being a part of any event. Instantly, we're going on social media to talk about it. And, yeah, I think that's affecting and changing. Nobody wants to, like, be that person who's, like, canceled now. So I think that's changing the way that people are adjusting, you know? It's huge. I love this. I remember I was at AWA, and this photographer was – he was, he was trying to use, make the best out of his position. And his girls was just like, no, nah, you want that angle. You got to pay for it. And I'm just looking like, this is beautiful. I didn't even have to say nothing. Like, and I'm not uh, five, ten years ago. That might have been a story that was revealed five, ten later about some photographer harassing somebody. So this exactly socially normal to correct people is beautiful. I love it. I love it. That's just like. I, I thought for a while, Marcus Prime showed his dick to some girls, some artists. And we canceled his, we canceled his bag for three months. Three months, y'all. I was like, this, this is the change I want to see, man. Uh, somebody asked if I've seen the boys on Amazon. I have. Um, I know we're running out of time now. It's way too much to discuss. Um, the only thing I'll say on the boys is I felt like the season felt like it was halfway through when it ended. Like it felt like it was we were building up to the climax and then it was like over. So I hope I'm, re I'm excited and hopeful for the new season. Yeah. That's what I see a lot with a lot of adaptations of independent comics. Cause a lot of independent comics get made in waves. Cause that's generally what they can force. Like umbrella Academy, for example, is beautifully structured for like seasons. Like, have you seen umbrella Academy? Of course. Yeah. I love it. I love the second season too. I thought it was better to me. When she said, I heard you heard a rumor. You shut up and homie couldn't talk. And she said, I heard a rumor that you kept pouring, and he kept pouring, and he scalded on doing the sit. Amazing. Amazing. I love it. Something they made up for the show, too, because she's not black in the comic book. And I loved how they changed it for it. Like, yo, this makes sense. Indeed. It's it's excellent. Like, thank you for coming, Frankie. I truly yo, appreciate it. Maybe I, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram loves me now, so they stopped confining my live to 60 minutes. Me and Chris talked for, like, probably two hours one time. But I ain't going to hold you. Um, Snap. Yeah, is there a, a last sentence or phrase or thread of conversation? Oh, we can keep going. It's up to you. Like, this is your day. I got this is my you, day. Bro. Nah, I'm good, man. I'm, I'm about to head out and eat some food. Especially since Black Gay Comic V said the roti's on the way, man. I'm about to go cop. You know <laughs> Um, but I'm excited to be here. I'm glad we got to chop it up. I'm really excited um, to see where you're going to go with your stuff. I've been loving, I've been loving how your page has been growing there and how it's been changing. And I love seeing that with us. So like, I'm glad to be here. It's so different from when we 
spoke last year, you know? Indeed. Yeah, the world's become a different thing. Getting older in this space has been weird because, like, y'all have raised me over the last four years. <laughs> like, and so, like, legit, like, if the blurred view did not exist, I would not exist. And I found you, like, on your first, first post because of the freaking hashtag. And so seeing how nicely, like, everything is grown and then how, like, I've changed without realizing it, but I'll look back at the way that I used to talk and the things I used to say. And now, and it's like completely different. Now, what it really so like, you're a part of this evolution. I like, thank you for that tremendously. Yo, thank you. Thank you. It's really, it's been really great. I appreciate it. Blessings to you. <laughs> thank you. Um, if you guys are looking for me, fantastic, cranky, F R A and K E Y. Bless you on Twitter. At Fairboy Fighter. I'm going to have to go on the Twitter section and do battle tonight. That's a fag. Pull up, man. Pull up. I'm with it. <laughs> well, fantastic, fantastic, Frank. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys. Peace.